welcome to my rookie review series, in which I'll showcase some more of what I have learned from each rookie over each round, and whether or not they are relevant yet solid selections for our teams. Now, as you can see, there are quite a few rookies to discuss, but also in saying that, there's not many that are quite relevant, so I will get through it probably as quickly as possible and try and go into a little bit more depth on the rookies that are sort of relevant. And I will start with none other than Nathan O'Driscoll, who is now kind of off the bubble. Uh, he could have got him in for 123k last week. I didn't. I did miss out. Uh, yeah, no one expected him to go 104. So, yeah, 167k. Is he worth the money? I, I think he is, in all honesty, because the ceiling has always been there. He's been a proven scorer in the past, and... Keep in mind, his first game where he scored 18, he, yeah, many know he actually was the medical sub. His first ever possession in AFL football was an absolute snag from the pocket on the left foot. So, yeah, supreme talent and somewhere that I have always quite rated. And, yeah, just a bit flat that we didn't get him round one because that just would have been so ideal. Someone that I would much rather over a Sam DeConning type. But, yeah, now he's come out and scored 104. So, yeah, for 167k, I think he is relevant this week. Played three games, obviously, but I, I don't see a reason we can't get him in this week. But it's your last chance because he probably won't be worth any money and the ship sailed after his next price change. But I'm all for this pick. Uh, he's great coverage for a Mitch Hinge type. Now, am I trading Hinge this week? I, I don't think I will. I just reckon the role for him is so good. The ceiling is good. I don't think he's going to be out for too long, so I'm happy to hold. But I am keen to chop a Josh Ward or a Connor McDonald type so I can get in an O'Driscoll, someone that I just think we need in our teams because from from this year's draft or, or last year's draft, we saw that the top 10 are pretty good. But yeah, it, it drops off quite a fair bit. So the players of a higher ceiling, we need to submit them in our teams uh, ASAP. So... Yeah, O'Driscoll, I think he's one that I'm really struggling to go past at this point in time. I really I really do rate him as a player and even more so as a selection. So I think he is by far the biggest must-have rookie of this video. Not of all year, that's, that's a bit ludicrous, but uh, definitely of this video. So yeah, I'm all for O'Driscoll this week. We want to go there. Next player here, uh, Ben Miller. Uh, he just played... He's only played two games, coming off 57, so yeah, probably probably avoid him. Flynn Perez, now he's been around for a few years now, 147K. Obviously suffered a couple of, I think a couple ACL injuries in the past, and he might have decent job security. I've actually got pegged as moderate, because at the moment, I don't know if it's going to be an ongoing regular thing, but Zeeble has moved down forward or well, at least last week anyway, against the Swans. Not sure what that's all about. I think he's much better down back, but I think Perez basically has a free spot there uh, at the moment, and it's more a better thing for Aaron Hall, who I do have in my team, who I think should benefit quite a fair bit if Zeeble's playing forward. But I think, yeah, Flynn Perez, not a bad selection, but I just think you go on O'Driscoll over him every day of the week. Only a defender, but yeah, someone I think we should just avoid at all costs. Jordan Boyd, been on the radar for a few weeks now, only scored 39. Last chance to get him in, I think only yeah, 123k, but I don't know if the ceiling's too high. I'll yeah, probably avoid him, even though he's probably got pretty moderate job security for now. I'm happy to let that ship sail. And the next one is very, very relevant. Someone that, well, many would know that I've rated quite a fair bit over the off-season, I did a rookie review on him, and that is Neil Erasmus, and probably probably the most impressive rookie I did in terms of the stats, and everything in Supercoach terms just just clicked really well. His disposal efficiency, kick-to-handball ratio, contested. So things just sort of worked out a little bit for Erasmus. And I, I actually didn't even realise he played last week, so that's a bit interesting, or the week before, because I didn't do a rookie review. There just wasn't much to talk about, but... Yeah, definitely on the bubble this week. 166k, can we go him? Yeah, I think we can. It's one of those weeks where you could probably do a double downgrade to Erasmus and O'Driscoll. That's something that I'm really quite contemplating, but yeah, it's quite difficult. Can you have them, can you have them both? Yeah, definitely, but 
yeah, it's, it's one of those things. I'm not sure if we if we can actually fit them both in at the same time. Uh, I had to do, have to do a bit of thinking because they're both players that I really do want in my team, but I'm just not sure if there's a way I can actually fit them unless I drop a Dylan Stevens as well because I'm not willing to drop uh, Mitch Hinge. I think he's just got a lot of coin to make, and I, I did just discuss him before, but it would be Stevens and Ward or or probably Stevens and McDonald for these two, just to sort of, yeah, do a, a rookie downgrade correction trade, if that makes sense. Probably probably doesn't, but yeah, Rasmus, someone that you definitely can consider. The role is friendly. Uh, the moderate job security, the only reason I say that is because Freo do have a fair few injuries, especially in the midfield, and and they're stacked there. So does, does Rasmus get pushed out of the team when these five tight players come back? And I'm not sure if Mundy's back or not, but... Yeah, I don't know about his job security, but the talent's there. And if he can consistently score what he has been doing, 70 pluses, I think he's got no problem whatsoever holding his spot. But yeah, big uh, big raps on this player, and I like watching him play. He's a very, very nice talent. So yeah, I think we can consider him uh, most definitely. The next one here, uh, Lewis Butler, 130k, been around for a little bit. I think he was... A rookie in one of these videos last year, if I'm honest, only scored 43. Midfielder, yeah, I'd probably just avoid him at all costs. Uh, Reef McGuinness, he's been a, a very much discussed rookie over the preseason and was a, was a big placeholder for a lot of teams. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't mind him as a player, but the scoring potential is just not there. Only a 21 with the likes of Erasmus and O'Driscoll. Yeah, don't. It's going to be the same situation for these midfield rookies. Uh, like, why would you bother when you got better options? Uh, Braden Proust, this is a really big one. So, not going to play this week, obviously, suspended. We can assess the situation coming into next week. But has played two games already. So, next time he plays, uh, you're too late. So, 204k. Far out, that's just so cheap. But he's going to be the biggest roller coaster pick. He gets injured, he gets suspended. But then he comes out and scores a hundred and two, so I think he's a I think he's a very good ruckman. The talent's there, but I went wits over him instead. But if you want to go there, I, I don't see why you can't because two hundred four k off a hundred and two. That's a lot of cash gen coming through. And if he does get injured, hopefully you you've made your bang for your buck and a short term reliable selection could be on the cards for Bruce, but. Yeah, there's just so much risk attached to it that I was just a little bit spooked out of this one. But definitely, well, he's not even a rookie, is he? He's been he's been around for ages. He's played at, maybe he played at Melbourne and then, was it Melbourne? And then, I know he's definitely at North Melbourne. So he's been around a bit, been in the system for a while. And it's 2022 already and he's still considered a rookie. Crazy stuff. But someone that I reckon you can definitely have in your side. I, I, I'm not going for it, but... Yeah, I couldn't blame anyone for doing that, especially with the Gorn situation with the with the Jackson 50-50 split and Darcy underperforming and missing a lot of football. So, yeah, the ruck's pretty thin. If you don't have wits, uh, Proust is definitely your next best bet for that price. So, yeah, moderate job security. Why is it moderate and not good? Well, we got, you got Matty Flynn in the mix as well. And this happened a lot last year with these two blokes. I don't know if it was... No, it wasn't Proust, but it was Flynn and Briggs and Mumford. That's the one I was forgetting about. But these three Ruckman, like one would be out every second week and it would be the most frustrating thing in a Supercoach sense. So, yeah, for Proust, maybe a bit moderate because when Flynn's played this year, he's been terrific. But can they fit them both? I don't think so. That's the only reason it's moderate. But if Flynn's not in the mix and it's, it's good... Uh, by a length of the Flemington straight, but yeah, we're going to have a moderate for now and, and a, a clear field option. Have him at R2 if you if you want. And if you don't have Hayes, or if you, sorry, if you do have Hayes at R2 at the moment, and he's, he's kind of been on the chopping block, a uh, massive reason. I think George has done this, but he's actually had to move Hayes back forward and then trade in a Proust type just to cover a donut at R2. Nothing worse than that. So if you're in that situation, definitely bring Proust in. Uh, for next week, but yeah, enough discussed on him, definitely a solid option, but high risk, high reward, and yeah, he's going to be the most inconsistent pick ever, and the biggest of roller coaster selections, Malcolm Roses, 130k, 
I remember discussing him last year and I actually thought he was a decent sort of pick and he's still scoring well, 74 uh, forward selection. I don't know about his role because I simply just have not seen him play. I didn't watch any of the Gold Coast Carlton game on the weekend, so I couldn't get a read on it whatsoever. Maybe he's got moderate job security because he definitely played pretty well if he's scoring 74 as a rookie, but I'll be avoiding him just because there are other better options, as I previous, previously discussed. Jed McEntity, uh, or McEntity, I should say, 123k mid-forward rookie. Oh, Port Adelaide have just been terrible all around. So, yeah, it's no surprise that their players are under underdone and nothing really going going that well. And we're, we can see exactly where this is going when you look at the likes of Zach Butters playing that same four line, just struggling to get it done. So, yeah, I don't know if we can pick uh, McEntee. I, I keep butchering that name, uh, McEntee. That's a bit of a, a funny one, but... Yeah, I'd be avoiding him at all costs. The The DPV is pretty good, and the the talent's good, but Port Adelaide need a click in the gear before you can select him. And if he, if he performs this week, because he is on the bubble, so he's definitely going to make some coin, but if he does perform really well this week, he won't make a whole lot of coin. But if he can go 80 to 90, like just out of the blue, maybe someone we talk about next week, but this week, yeah, definitely not. Uh, Marcus uh, Windhager, I think it is, is Windhager. Uh, he he doesn't seem to be the best option, really. I mean, the ceiling's not there. I, I think St Kilda were just on fire against the Hawks on Sunday. And, yeah, he he's probably on the chopping block, so, yeah, don't go near him. And the final one, very exciting player, someone I absolutely love watching in the red and black Guernsey. He's a bomber supporter, Tex Wanganin. Uh, yeah, it was a fitting moment where he kicked his first goal and his, his dad was celebrating in the grandstand. What an all-time great uh, Gavin was. But in Supercoach, yeah, there's no way at all. 102K, we got Nick Martin for that sort of spot, that 102K rookie in the forward line. So, yeah, there's no there's no chance at all that we can select him. Only scored a 20, low total points as well, play too much forward. So, yeah. Avoid at all costs. Poor job security. Maybe maybe it's okay. I could I could have moderate, but nonetheless, there's just there's just better options. So to cap it off, can you pick O'Driscoll and Erasmus this week and do a double double downgrade? Well, I think we honestly can. Because Ward's underdone. Stevens got the arse a couple of weeks ago and he wasn't named against North. Ultra concerning. If he's not named Thursday night, he may be someone that leaves my team. And then McDonald. So he's he needs a big game, McDonald, to actually make some coins. So if you're ever going to double downgrade before upgrading season, this would be the week. And a lot of people in the same situation as me with Cripps, who's probably, I think he's only missing a week. It's been confirmed. So absolute hold to me, which is painful because I can't get Heaney. But in hindsight, it's pretty good because I don't have to activate a trade boost for Heaney, O'Driscoll, and Erasmus. So, yeah, if this was a week to double double downgrade, it would be this one. So, yeah, I, I don't see the harm in it. And bank yourself some cash and then make some moves coming into round five. So, yeah, another another thing as well, I've rambled on a bit here, but Erasmus could be good cover, coverage as well for Cripps to come on because he's a pretty good scorer, as we can see. Uh, had two good scores, so, yeah, we don't mind that. So, yeah, two blokes that I'm definitely considering this week. I haven't made up my mind whether I trade them both into my team, but at least one of them will be in the squad coming to round four. But I'll reveal exactly who on my Twitter around Thursday night when the teams are named and, and all that sort of stuff. But, yeah, I hope you enjoy the Rookie Review Series. Um, Yeah, not as long as the other ones because there's you know, less players to talk about. I missed out last week just because there wasn't a whole lot going on. I thought oh, I just need a spell from this and I'll recess it. Over round four. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope your team is going well in 2022. But for now, as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.